Thank you, thank you, and Asante Sana for joining us for another classic episode of the Wicked Edition. I'm your host, Dr. Kingori. Thank you for the drama metulete across this week. Asante Sana, this week has been hot. To answer now, following the pressure to name a running mate from uh, the Mount Kenya region in both sides of the political divide, former president, uh, vice president, Kalonzo Musyoka has announced that he is a Kikuyu. <laughs> Stop telling the people Mount Kenya region that Kalonzo is not a um, Kikuyu. I am. <laughs> Are you with me? Eh, man, the haters have claimed that Kalonzo has upgraded from changing tune in previous elections. He's now changing the whole language. Now, <laughs> <laughs> to be fair to the Waipa leader, every politician does this. When the president uh, goes to the coast, anakuwa Swahili. When Baba goes to Western, anakuwa Muluya. <laughs> Eh, wazi. I hope you now see it. Kenyan politicians will never speak one language. Hata siwezi shangaa siku moja tukiamka usikie Rigathi Gashagwa ni mufilipino. Now, <laughs> now serious. Uh, a Kenyan politician has a kwa na kuongelesha kizungu but in real sense anakupiga Kiswahili mazi. And when Kalonzo made that announcement, mali nilikuwa hiyo <laughs> vile alisema yeye ni mkikuyu nilisikia hata mmoja akilipuka nayo ati mimi nilijua kitabu Kalonzo ni mkikuyu ukusikia akina kiri wakisema alinunuliwa 3 billion so ndio <laughs> ikia azimio ama hata hiyo matuda wanamuita kwani ni awapi na is a hot season and we are counting down days to the general elections. Uh, political parties are conducting nominations across the country or not. In fact, this is a very interesting video to me, Patana Nayo, how nominations are done in Kenya. On your marks. Hey, man. <laughs> However you think about it, but one thing for sure, Niati, the exercise has served as enough drama for the week. I was particularly interested in this explanation by one of the aspirants, Wa Kiambu Gubernatorial Race, Anaitua Wainaina Jango, on how he believes he lost the nomination for the UDA ticket. Yo jina haikuwa na majina zangu zote. Sana sana najulikana kwa jina Jango. Na... Na hiyo jina jango ni jina ofisho, iko kwa kutablisho, wakati nilinele kujisajiri, eh, wakati nilijisajiri kwa chama, nilitumia majina yangu Patrick Wainaina Jango. Sasa umekuta kwa ballot paper, wameweka majina mawili. Ya, jina ya jango haikuwa pale, uh, ile picha waliweka, ilikuwa picha ingine haijaka kama mimi. <laughs> Niseme kwamba iyo ni shugli ama uomina uona kuwa mpango. Exactly. Now for someone who doesn't understand what's in a name, it would seem very immature to imagine a jango being a governor in Kiambu. But that's besides the point. We have not independently verified the claims that Mahesh made here, but he has a point. Those little details are very important. Imagine going to the ballot to vote for president. Alafu on uh, your way of identifying your candidate, is through your candidate pic candidate's picture. But this is all you can find. <laughs> and then you are like, hey, Kwani Rington was on the ballot. Unambu Z. That is Paul Muite. IBC. <laughs> IBC. IBC <laughs> waliena nama TBT. I hope that makes sense. Image. Image, maze, when it comes to uh, leadership in Kenya is very important. And one of my all, uh, my all time favorite example, ni hii. Ya umzai. Hindi opita yangu. Osiku kama unapita hapa, unaona, unafikiri mimi hiko, lakini kumbe ni hivi. Maze image, image, image. 
that's the the late uh, chief wa sub chief wa nyawita sub location mzee Harrison Mogokwama mzee may, may God rest his soul but you get the point your image as a leader is one way for you to communicate with your people na kama ni ukweli mzee waliweka ya mhesh picha yake ya ID kwa ballot paper that wasn't fair i've never understood why we even need the kenyan id to prove that you are you na ukai kama wewe now i think I, th- i think that's why we have the id number because personally he by then is serious on a very serious note i find it offensive nikipatia mtu id yangu and they are like ah yes this is you huyu ni wewe kabisa mi jam mi jam and i think id za kenya zina kuanga memes hard copy <laughs> a lot of things make sense uh, when you think about id cards from that perspective It's, it's it's not only us who have a bad image of the government it's mutual <laughs> the government also have a bad image of each and every one of us now hopefully uh kwa hii mambo ya nomination the UDA can uh, reach out to um reach out and have a word with Mahesh wa inaina jango lakini sasa shida is if that word is kujisajili wakati nilienda kujaza kusijazi kusijazi But hiyo ndio hiyo ingekuwa nomination process hata najua mheshimiwa uh, uh, jango wange shughulika nayo kabisa uh, kujisajili ni registration now this that video is a perfect impression of how hard it's been for the new sim card registration and um, the nominations may be un, may, may have been unfair to some aspirants but i will not lie the exercise has been very kind to us in terms of content for example uh, the nomination exercise here odm in homa bay uh, we got to learn that in homa bay love may be a four letter word but the four letters in homa bay are not l o v e it's b a b a hata raila sende tufukuze bibi yetu hata nitafukuza tu leo tu raila niambia nifukuze bwanangu nafukuza bwanangu hata kiniambia niweze bwanangu na acha show me a better definition of political marriages <laughs> now in homa bay this is what they mean wakisema baba is the head of the family na it's exactly in literal form Uh, in other news one of the most talked about cases uh, in the world of politics is the reports that Igembe South MP uh, Honorable John Paul Murigi <laughs> offered to return the car gifted to him by President Uhuru five years ago so that just so, so that he can have peace and independence to support UDA fellow Kenyans mazi this may be the classiest example yet of a Kenyan politician giving back now it's interesting <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting that should he go through with that idea he will be the first aspirant in this election um, to double up as a returning officer and <laughs> it's not only John Paul uh, there's something about people abandoning president Uhuru's uh, political vehicles to be specific <laughs> jubilee <laughs> <laughs> and this is just a tip of the iceberg in terms of what politicians go through to get to office you must have heard of the recent case in Megori where um, uh, an aspirant for the women representative position and it was Fatma Mohamed ali uza nyumba yake she sold her 25 million bob house just to get a ticket to the august house alafu akaanguka mapema now kwa ground wananchi wanasema ati vile aliuza nyumba yake walikaa wakaona ni kama atalala kwa kazi sasa wakafanya mathematic mazenyi pia muaje man azini umesikuwa mnafanya watu hivyo mnapelekaje mtu mnapelekaje mtu nyumbani na ameshauza hata nyumba yake be kind Be kind. Now, our main topic of discussion um, for this episode is a life saver manzi. On 7th of April I posted on Facebook uh, on my Facebook page uh, that we needed to have a very serious conversations uh, kwa mambo ya high blood pressure in pregnancy. And what I saw in the comment sections was scary to say the least. And it was more scary than I had imagined. Manzi people are going through a lot hapa nje manzi and the cost um, ya yeah, your lack of knowledge is measured in terms of lives lost i want to give a special shout out to everyone who contributed to that conversation maze kuna watu kama dr osiemo dominic alikuja hapo kwa comment he took his time to share a very um, in, in a very detailed way very useful information and explain uh, high blood pressure in pregnancy na hapo by the tuka learn inaitwa preeclampsia inaitwa preeclampsia and tulikuwa pia na gentlemen like jamaa anaitwa hilary uh, cheruyot uh, pia akakuja akashare information poa sana we had a lady like um, Liz Sitati mwenye alishare personal experience in her own words anasema yeye aliona shetani na macho 
unajua watu wengine ukisikia kuona shetani na macho unafikiria ni ex wako mme meet but he this is a <laughs> this is a whole different ball game kulikuwa na demu inaitwa Nimo Daniels anasema yeye aliongezwa damu sometimes August last year pressure yake ikapanda up to 200 plus na it's a very scary thing to live with na mimi before the reason why i made that post sikuwa najua it's such i think let me call it a pandemic now i'll share how to uh, i got to make that post but die but our team felt that it was important that we extend that conversation from social media to this platform and get help from professionals uh, to help us break it down and hopefully uh, to neza create more awareness uh, dr nyashira mudiga was the first doctor Uh, was among the first doctors we ever brought on the show like wakati tulikuwa na idea like hey we need doctors we need someone who can speak on medicine a qualified medical doctor uh, she was she came through kwa shomara ya kwanza uh, we brought her on the show when and this time round when we contacted her because i personally know how passionate she is about maternal health care please nilimit na by the way ni maternity ya mbagadi hospital and i know kweli kweli it's uh, inakuanga kwa hati yake sana i'm also glad that she was available for this conversation when we reached out and just like that dr nyashira is in the house yeah. 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 Ah, right. 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 asante sana and while doing research for this topic we learned that blood pressure is such a broad topic aiko kwa pregnancy peke yake and that's how we landed on a scientist who happens to be a blood Pressure champion Zablon Zablon Orina is in the house <laughs> Asante sana Asante sana tafadhali let us extend this conversation to the second part of uh, the show with uh, converse, ndio, a conversation ndio conversation na guest wetu in a bit see you guys shortly <laughs> Zablon um uh, story yako just a brief yes. uh, why an interest in pressure kila mtu akona blood pressure by the way if you don't have blood pressure you are dead so what matters is is it high normal ama iko chini yes. so my my interest in blood pressure came because my elder bro alipata kidney failure because of high blood pressure then after that nikajipata nalipa bill kidney dialysis twice a week 18000 every week for one and a half years and the guy still died after your sacrifice yet so being a scientist nikasema Let me step out and talk about high blood pressure in the simplest terms possible for common mwananchi. Hiyo ni ku demystify hypertension. So niko na objective ya kuensure every adult in Kenya anajua blood pressure yake so that we fix it. Okay. Yes. That's that's a very good initiative. Na ni poa sana ume 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 classify the differences. Kuna pressure iko high, kuna pressure iko low, na kuna pressure ya kusikia fiti. So Yes. So so <laughs> Hey serious. Ni ideally there's a limit ya siku na time mtu akichangamka unajiambia? Yes. So hiyo ni pressure ya kuchangamka, hiyo ni safe. Yes, kuna kuna pressure ambayo iko safe inaitwa normal blood pressure. Uh-huh. So if you have normal blood pressure your organs are safe unaishi miaka mingi utapata heart attack kidney azita fail utapata yes. stroke unaona yes. lakini sasa pressure yako ikianza kuwa above 140 over 90 imeanza kuitwa high blood pressure na umeanza ku damage organs pole pole it's a silent killer so haina signs that utasikia uta kichwa inauma hapa uende hospitali mm-hmm. so it will damage you pole pole over years then kidogo one day when you are doing a strenuous activity like maybe trying to function at the junction una una kufa then they arrest the lady you know try, try. so it is very common yes yeah so so if you know your blood pressure at 18 and and you keep it below 120 over 80 that's normal then chances are very low kwamba utafikia your point you know yes so at wengi we have an opportunity but uh, at uji tunatembea nayo then ukianguka they say he was not sick Yes. Lazima amefanyiwa kitu. So that's how we say it. Maybe the lady am poison ama tunasema politician was killed. You've seen it many na, times. Na wale wase usema uh-huh. kwa relationship imekupea pressure. Hiyo inaweza pandisha damu mbio. Yeah, yeah, yes, stress is part of uh, the reasons that your blood pressure can go up. Because yes. ukikuwa na stress vessels zako unaro alafu heart ina beat faster. So ukikuwa na stress for long then pressure yako inaweza kuwa sustainably Hi. So I recommend you join a choir or do something at least to manage your, your stress. Tutarudi hapo kwa watu wa choir na blood pressure, but 
<laughs> Doc, um, the, the, the post we put up on Facebook, mm. it elicited very mixed reactions. Mm. Now, first of all, um, my, my question would be, is it possible? Am I, are there things that can be done? So, so to a when you have pregnancy, I carry through term, bila kukuana incidence your blood pressure. Uh, first, I will, I really want to appreciate that you're the one who's coming up with this conversation. Thank you. Ma. Because most of the time, it's the, the men are not as involved even with the, with the conversation. So thank you uh, for this. But uh, first, preeclampsia, ile enye sasa inakuwa described, it starts, it's high blood pressure that starts after 20 weeks of the pregnancy. To keep at before 20 weeks, we, the, the biggest assumption is that you had high blood pressure before, and it was not known. It was not picked. This is why his initiative becomes very important, that you need to know your blood pressure before. Okay? Then kuna zile tunaitanga risk factors for why you would, it's possible that you could have preeclampsia when you're pregnant. So you realize uh, the, if there's a family history that it happened, if in your previous pregnancy you had preeclampsia, there's a likelihood of it happening again. What we call extreme ages, very, very young mothers, the teenage mothers, older mothers over, I don't like giving the age, uh, over 35, uh, extreme of ages. Even assuming you get pregnant at 45, 50, the chances of having preeclampsia are also high. Multiple gestation, meaning twin pregnancy, triplets, yes. Lifestyle, because of our lifestyle obesity, which you'd probably have had prior to the pregnancy. The important thing is that when you find out you're pregnant, please go to hospital. Because what most people do and most patients that we see, they come uh, later on, especially mothers who've had other children. They say, ah, sinajua ile dokata. Mini veteran. Um, easy natambua kabisa. So nita jipatia. Wanaanzangata kujipa supplements. Wanakujanga, they come when the pregnancy has progressed. And by the time they are coming, you know at home, they are not taking the blood pressure reading. They are not monitoring these things. So when they come in is when you're asking, how long has it been high? And they have no idea. So can you prevent it? Not really. We can adjust our lifestyle. We can improve what we eat just to make sure you're not in the risk group, at risk group. The ones who are obese, the ones who are just lifestyle issues. Yeah. But with pregnancy itself, the reason there is preeclampsia in the first place is because there are some changes that happens to the blood vessels at the level of the placenta. Okay, so that's where the changes happen. And if that change doesn't happen adequately, then it predisposes to the preeclampsia. Okay. So it is not this person's fault or the other person's fault. The mm. idea is or the it's minute it's found, the, we start treatment. Is it na mtu akikupea stress during pregnancy? It bado? just worsens. Kumbuka bado, you're still at risk at the usual reasons for elevated blood pressure. Okay. okay. When you're pregnant, it doesn't excuse you or exclude you from the risk factors that would affect any other person. Okay. But in pregnancy itself, the reason why it's very important to go for your clinic, so that if we find it and we find that it's high during pregnancy, then we manage and there's medication for it. Okay. Mm -hmm. From the conversation we posted, mm -hmm. along the lines of maternal health, mm -hmm. um, Kunawatu will bring up a conversation. I mm -hmm. saw a few people commenting mm -hmm. along the lines of uh, women try to prove their worth. It's a very insensitive thing to say. Mm -hmm. to women try to prove their worth by saying, I want to give birth normally. We seem to us, yes, mimi ni danga manya. So, the, the, yeah. the, 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 yo, what is it about, how does someone know they mm. should go for CS bila kufil ni kama, ah, watu wanataka kutengeneza pesa na mimi? Mm. First of all, go to a doctor or a hospital that you trust. First of all, because now when you're, when the decision making process, you see, you can't go to the hospital and still call the shots. Number one, you won't be objective. There's no possibility. Even fellow colleagues, even I, when I'm unwell, I have no objectivity. The best thing is to see somebody that you trust. So you have a doctor that you trust and go to a hospital that you trust. Number two, I don't believe in any abnormal delivery. Whether cesarean section, whether vaginal delivery, to me, they are all normal. The abnormal, ni ile siku, mtu atazana mdomu. Tuseme sasa, now it was abnormal delivery. But to me, the agenda of the delivery process, that what you're aiming for at delivery is a safe baby, a healthy baby, and a healthy mother. A live baby and a live mother. That's what you're aiming for at delivery. Now, high blood pressure complicates things a lot because for most of the pregnant women who have preeclampsia, and actually preeclampsia is high blood pressure 
plus what we call proteinuria, which is protein in urine, plus some end organ damage. So by the time it's preeclampsia, it's showing some kidney function derangement, it's showing some liver problems, it's showing some, the patient could even be complaining of severe headache, uh, severe acidity, uh, low, uh, what, epigastric pain. So all these things, now we call it preeclampsia with or without severe features, okay? Now, at delivery, the treatment for preeclampsia is delivery. So you'll find a patient who is at, say, 22 weeks, which is very premature, and the pr pressure is completely unmanageable. And now she's going into end organ damage, meaning she's going to kidney failure, she's going to liver failure. Then now this patient, we recommend that we have to deliver at that point. Other than kukosa pesa, ni nini ingine na pea watu pressure yu ya kunini, ya, ya kukua ineza enda life-threatening, mm. in your okay. opinion? Okay, studies zote ambazo zimefanywa from 1948. Njua pressure imeanza kuangaliwa zaidi after yule Roosevelt wa US alikufa. He died of a, a stroke. He had heart failure for, for a while. So wakaanza a study in a Framingham heart study. Easy studies zimeonyesha kuwa watu ambao wako na excessive weight mi naziita vitambi. Watu ambao ambao wako awafanyi so, exercise to pregnancy but <laughs> <laughs> yeah so 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 pe pe people who have uh, excessive weight watu ambao wafanyi mazoezi sana sana wako likely kupata high blood pressure then i've been doing blood pressure checks since 2015 so it's almost a research like uh, checks and it goes very well kama una kitambi nipate pressure yako iko juu i ask about your activity unapata si sana you know Active lifestyle ni more than 5,000 steps per day. So most people actually in the cities are not active in their lifestyles. You must do 5,000 steps in at, a day. At least. Ama kama wewe si mtu kona time, fanya sprints and lifting of weights. Alafu, diet. Because people are into refined foods. Kia muka subui ni mkate chai. Sane, una, what, chai why you, mkate una, inaleta pressure. Una kula, why you I eating? I thought chai inaleta pressure tuju ya beya maziwa. <laughs> So, so, oh, thank God. So, 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 inakuwa type 2 diabetes. Ndio maana watu wanapatikana na high blood pressure tena wakati vitambi wanawekwa kwa blood pressure medications after a few uh, years tena wanapatikana type 2 diabetes because now they are cousins. Unaona? Check your blood pressure numbers. If they are above 120 over 80, anza ku work towards reducing those numbers. Don't wait until you are a patient at 140 90 before you can change your lifestyle. And changing your lifestyle, we to tattoo, cut the belly, exercise, and eat healthy. Leo sita wangelelea pombe na sigara, because hizo ni sumu. The minute you find that you're pregnant, start clinic. Don't assume that you know, or yes. don't assume that the previous pregnancy is seem to, similar to the current pregnancy. Okay. And also don't assume that somebody else's experience of the pregnancy journey is similar to yours. Okay. And then go to a doctor that you trust mm -hmm. and the hospital that you trust. Asanteni sana for joining us. Thank you for making time for our episode this week. My name is Dr. Kingori. Asante sana kwa guest. Wetu makofia. Bapu makofia. Ako sawa. Asante sana kwa the team. Ime tusaidia kwenye eh, production. Kila mtu, director John Milimu. Spirit poa sana. Uh, kila mtu kwenye auto queue. Quatch, Tom, creative team. Wapi makofia wa mazini. <laughs> and, finally, and finally, our audience, jipigieni makofi. <laughs> But honestly, honestly, ni wasemi na litanga ina jipo wa sana kwa hizu. Mnaona bile tulikuwa lonely time ya COVID. <laughs> so we are so glad. We are so glad to have you back. Uh, that's it. That's it for the weekend edition. See you next week. My name is Dr. King Ori.